So welcome everyone to this evening's webinar on uh, Fit to Garden and how we can stay pain-free and enjoy our gardens. Um, my name is Miriam and I'm a registered physiotherapist and co-owner at Fit for Life Physiotherapy. And I'm here just to moderate and keep Leslie on track in conversations so we're not here until nine. <laughs> Um, but we'll let Leslie um, introduce herself. She's our resident plant lady at the clinic and um, knows about all things plants and gardens. Well, that seems maybe a little excessive. Uh, <laughs> however, uh, I do enjoy gardening. I do do a lot of gardening. And I also don't like having a backache after I've gardened. So uh, the point of the talk is about um, how do we stay fit? How do we stay healthy? How do we stay pain free, as Miriam said, uh, while enjoying this season long, which, you know, we could talk uh, all day on uh, plants. And just so you know, if you saw this, um, the advertisement with that picture of me and all those green plants, those are my plants. That's uh, my living room. Uh, that, is, so, that is such an awesome picture. I love that one. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have a few more that I think, oh, they've really gotten bigger. I should, you know, I should do another picture. We do um, the photo. <laughs> yeah. Take another photo. Part two. Because uh, that we took during COVID, I believe, um, maybe last year or the year before. So yes, those are my indoor plants. But we are going to be talking more about outdoor uh, gardening. And of course, if there was a demand for indoor potting and planting and body mechanics for that, I'm happy to do that. Um, but we're going to focus on uh, outdoor planting and, and um, maintenance and that sort of thing. So Miriam is going to act as my IT support on this. Um, so if you have questions, do make sure you put them in the chat, but also put your chat to all um, what do we have to change that to, Miriam? I think all it's like viewers all, are all... all attendees or everyone yeah. or something like that. Just so if, if other people can see what you've asked, then they know they don't need to ask that question as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and can everyone, you can hear me and Miriam. So we're in two different locations so that hopefully um, we don't have any interference or feedback. So let's get rolling. Um, so the first thing is that I did want to know um, from some people, what is the limit? What do you have as your limit as, from spending time in your garden? You obviously, you're here on this webinar because you enjoy gardening. Um, do you have any burning questions right off the hop um, that you want to ask about um, gardening? And I'm not talking about specific plants, um, but um, more about body mechanics, or were you just uh, coming to find out a little bit about how to move? So those would help direct us, even though um, I do have a presentation, but if we have an idea from anybody what they're interested in particularly, um, it does make sure that I answer your question. Yeah. So if you, yeah, if you have any thoughts, just pop in the anything? chat, but uh, not so far. Okay. Um, okay. But certainly I know with my clients, it's often related to back pain, you know, knee pain from the crouching and that kind of thing that um, re they really struggle with for sure. And um, so then let's move on because what we're going to talk about um, is that some of the co common causes of pain um, that then become the limits or sorry, some of the main limits and then becomes pain is uh, relating from poor posture, poor body mechanics. And those two are very intertwined. I've got to say, it's very hard to just separate them out because poor body mechanics usually are because of poor posture or poor postures or positions. Um, and then also staying in a position far too long. Uh, no, I don't know about you, but I actually love weeding um, and I find it very peaceful. It's very relaxing. My mind can just wander. I don't have to think about anything and I can be doing that for a long time. And so having frequent position changes is important, uh, whether you're gardening, whether you're sitting at a desk doing computer work, um, no matter what it is, we need to move around. So uh, we're going to touch on all of this 
um, as we go forward. So first off, I wanted to address posture. Um, posture is something I've got to say that is at the crux of so many issues that we see as physiotherapists. Uh, an individual might come to us with knee pain or a shoulder problem or a neck problem. And every single time I'm talking about posture because posture relates to every facet of our life. And posture is something that we've just developed over time, whether that's a good posture or a poor posture um, and those habits related to that. So our spine is meant to have curves to it um, in a certain direction. So at the top, your cervical or your cervical spine, that's the spine, the top at your neck, uh, you have seven vertebrae and those have a curve one way. And that curve also matches the same curve that is down at your lumbar spine. They're in the same direction. And there at your lumbar spine, which is in your low back, you have also a curve in that same direction as your neck. There are five lumbar vertebrae. Those are the vertebrae that also carry a lot of our load, you know, carry a lot of our weight. In between those two, you have your thoracic spine. And the thoracic spine, it actually has a natural curve forward in like a forward bent position. So it's really important that uh, when we're talking about body mechanics and posture, that we appreciate some of the natural curves that we do have in our spine, but also recognize that when those curves go beyond what their natural uh, tendency is, it's a problem. So when we look at posture, um, the fellow here on the left of poor posture, you can see we have a dotted line, a vertical dotted line running north south. That's what we call a plumb line. And the plumb line should be, as you, if you see the middle picture, it should go right through your ear, your shoulder, your hip bone, the side of your knee, and about just in front of your ankle. So that is technically a good posture and that's when we're all lined up. Now, of course, we're not all perfect. Um, the one on the left, there's a lot of compensation there. So you can see that he has an extra rounded back in that thoracic spine. So his, gotta see here, his curve in the middle of his back is a little excessive, which means that his neck also has to go forward to offset some of that curve because at the end of the day, we are all connected. You know, when you hear that the hip bones connected to the knee bone, it really is true. And so when we look at the spine, a tug or a pull or a deviation one way in the spine causes a deviation the other way in another section of the spine, and then maybe another deviation somewhere else in the spine. So um, it really is important to assess posture so that we can make sure that we are um, aligning ourselves and working our mus muscles uh, in the best way. So here's a live uh, picture. So Miriam uh, on the right hand side, she's got pretty good posture. So she's standing with good posture, the plumb line, that purple line that you see, it's going through her ear, through her shoulder, right down the hip bone into her knee, and then we can't see the foot. But then what she's done is she's gone on the left hand side of the picture, she's tilted her pelvis. And so by tilting her pelvis and removing that natural curve in her lumbar spine, it affects the whole rest of her. Look at how flat her back is. And look what happens to her plumb line. If we keep the knees, the knees went a little bent there. So we maintained that line um, at the knees, but then her the plumb line is in front of her hips it certainly isn't at her shoulder and it's more uh, getting close to her cheekbone as opposed to, and certainly at her temple as opposed to in front of, or as opposed to at her ear. So just, and that's a standing posture. And then look at, I think many of us can relate to a posture on the left. So whether it's you're coming home after work and you're going to sit down and watch the Blue Jays game and you go and sit in your comfy chair, 
that posture again is really important that we need to try and maintain good posture in my 22 years 21 years of being a physio i have never had anyone tell me that good posture is painful it's not it's tiring and those are two very different things so our posture muscles become weakened because we don't use them. Those are real endurance muscles. We've got to train those and how you train them is through specific exercises and using them. So you've got to sit up straight. You've got to use your back muscles. So Miriam is doing a great job in her sitting posture on the right hand side. And unfortunately, far too often, we relate to a sitting posture on the left. And you can see how all those curves have changed. When we look at the garden, now we've got a few variations of pictures here over the last couple years. And so what I've tried to do is show you how, um, and these are some pictures of positions, some postures that I know you know, uh, because we've all gotten into them. So what I am showing you here are two, both are bad postures. Uh, the one on the right, let's go to the right first. Um, there's a real curve to my back. Now, um, I do spend a lot of time, a lot of my caseload is working with people um, who have been diagnosed with osteoporosis. Um, and so this position on the left or on the right in particular, and that spinal flexion, which is the bending forward, um, that is a high risk move for people with osteoporosis um, because of the loads that it puts through your spine. So from that population, we need to look at how to be getting, having better postures. But even when people have arthritic spines or um, spines that don't move well, we still need to be, even if it's not osteoporosis, we need better back health um, outside of osteoporosis. So what you can see the picture on the right, I'm not over top of the load that I want to be addressing. I think here we were maybe uh, just digging up, turning up the garden, but you can see I'm reaching. So I'm really stretching out those muscles um, in not a great way um, of my back. So my low back, has we've lost our normal curve, my thoracic spine, that middle back right around the bra strap line, that also has an increased uh, bend to it or an increased kyphosis. And my head is lurching forward because I'm not over top of the load or I'm not over top of the item or items that I want to be digging at. I'm reaching for it. On top of that, I'm not sure everybody can get their knees in that position that I have my knees in. So that can be a very difficult position um, for people to be in. And certainly if you're there for any length of time, it's not ideal. So we're going to speak about some better ways um, to have better postures. And again, the picture on the left, even though my back looks a little straighter, I'm not close enough to what I want to be working on. And you can imagine um, first of the season when you're really starting to dig out some weeds and you're in a position for a long time because it's a lot of work, you can't maintain these positions. It's not healthy for your knees and it's not healthy for your back. And I am open to anybody interrupting me as I go along if you have questions, so feel free. So here is a... Um, Here's a um, option, a better option for being in a better posture. So now you can see if Miriam, if you can move the cursor, if you go to my hips, my back and my hips and my knees, we're looking at 90 degrees, 90 degrees. So my hips are bent at 90 to my back and my knees are bent at 90 degrees. And so that is a more appropriate way. Again, there will always be and there might be people in the crowd and we're going to address knee replacements. Um, but so for those who can be on your knees, here's the option. It's better back health. You can see in my lumbar spine and in my thoracic spine, those normal curves are more maintained. And so that's what we want. We want neutral. We want a neutral spine. 
I think my head could probably be up a little higher there. It's hard to tell with all my hair uh, where it is really, but um, I could probably have brought my chin in a little bit better just to maintain a better alignment. Of note, um, I think a couple years ago when we were making those photos, I didn't have my kneeler. So all I did to help with my knees is I just got some bags. Um, I got some yard waste bags and put them under there just to cushion uh, from the uneven ground. But honestly, I have had um, pillows from home and put them in a garbage bag or two garbage bags to give you some cushion. You don't want it too thick because then you're going to be raising yourself too far away from the ground and that's not going to be ideal but you could get a rolled up beach towel or a bath towel uh, not a tea towel that's not thick enough but something to give you a little cushion uh, because the earth is uneven um, and it can be irritating to the knees you can flip then miriam so here is another position so if we didn't want to be on our hands and knees in that four point um, position you can squat so a theme that's going to ride through this whole presentation is that we need better leg strength in order to garden safely for our back. There's no way around it. So we have to be exercising our legs and preparing our legs to be able to do the work so that we aren't doing the work with our back or straining our back. The side view on the, well, let's go to the right-hand side first, is I'm using leverage. I'm using my elbow to leverage against my knee. So I'm very stable while I'm with the right hand. I'm leveraging myself while I pick away at the um, ground with my left. And the left picture that you see there is just the side view of that. So I'm in. I've got my hips bent, my back is fairly neutral, and I'm hinging. We have some videos to show this. Um, that's a still shot, but I'm squatting. I'm doing a squat and I'm using my legs to do the work. All right, flip Miriam. And again, Miriam, if you have anything to say on this, you know, go for yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So are we on the body mechanics? Yes, we are. Let's oh. talk body mechanics. I Let's know I kind of body. passed that too quickly. <laughs> Pardon me? I passed by that too quickly. <laughs> you know, okay. And he has horrible body mechanics, by the way. Look at him yeah. bending over there. That poor guy's not going to be a farmer for much longer. Okay, <laughs> flip the, flip the uh, slide. So here were some pictures of the way on the left. Let's go left this time. Here's the bad way of doing it, right? Basic back mechanics is that when you have to lift something, you hug the load. You've got to bring that load in close to you so it becomes part of your body. If it's far away from you or at your arm's length, all of a sudden we're now having gravity add to the absolute weight of that bag. So nobody wants to be lifting a 10 pound bag. So the loads to your spine, this goes back to physics class. So whenever that was for people, <laughs> the load, if you have that load on the end of a long lever, your arms, and let's say that bag weighed 10 pounds for easy math here. If it weighs 10 pounds and then you have the weight of gravity, which is 9.8 meters per second. So let's call that 10. You now have 10 pounds times 10, which is gravity, that bag is a hundred pound load on your spine when it's out that far. When you hug the load, you reduce that load of the bag significantly. And look at that great squat that I'm in. I'm mm -hmm. hugging the load and I'm doing a squat to pick up that bag. And I think at the end of the day, if you have back issues, if you have knee issues, if you have osteoporosis, whatever the issue is, don't load the bag full, right? I know it's going to cost maybe a couple more bucks because you're going to use one or two more bags, but this is no different than your groceries and how you, how many, how many groceries, how much you fill up these bags and how you do it. So uh, the same principle applies here to the yard waste. Go ahead, Miriam. So here are some options for bending over. 
Um, again, the goal here is to maintain, to not be bending and humping yourself forward. And so this is called a modified golfer's reach. So on the left, for anybody that has um, decent balance, um, I'm using whether it be the blue box I just turned upside down, which is a great leverage uh, support. So we all may have an extra blue box kicking around or a chair or a little stool, something that you can use as leverage. So in both of these pictures, I've used something. One was a rake just to balance me and one is the blue box. The reason I'm doing this and the reason I'm showing this, I show this as a way to pick up lots of things, uh, particularly in a kitchen. So instead of just bending over and, and humping over at your back, as soon as you stick your leg out, it neutralizes the curve in your lumbar spine. So this is an easy way now, we don't have a picture of me without the leg out, I don't think, eh, Miriam? Not in this one, no. No, so that would be something for the next time we do the video. We can show without and with, or we do it in a video, because it really is impressive to see how curved your back is if I just bent over and picked that weed with my legs fairly straight. And the difference, the neutralizing of the back as soon as I stick my leg out. It's a normal neutral spine and very little load on your spine. Not everybody can just hold a rake to bend over and grab that niggling weed. But if you need then the blue box, use the blue box. And this is an option if your knees don't tolerate a deep squat or don't tolerate the pressure um, of putting it on it directly. Oh, so these are uh, fresh off the presses. Mother's Day weekend. So I'm showing you on the left hand side, because we have to before we get to the garden, how are we getting that soil in and out of the car. So what I did here, stick with replay that one again a couple of times Miriam. So what I did is I had a garbage bag actually just a general garbage bag uh, in the trunk. And I then had the soil get somebody else to do it. You know, you're buying bags of soil. There's people at the yard, at the garden center or the grocery store that can load it in your car. Have them load it in the car. Do it one more time, Miriam. Load it in the car for you on top of your garbage bag. And so all I did is now I'm using one bag. That's a sheet manure. Doesn't matter what it is, but I've got that in my car. I've turned the wheelbarrow on its side just for ease of use. And I'm sliding the bag with very little effort. I'm pulling on the bag, which slides the manure right in there. And then from the um, wheelbarrow, I could just pull the garbage bag out from underneath it. Option number two, I've given a second option, is to turn the wheelbarrow facing the car just if you wanted it that way, but I'm still sliding with the garbage bag. It just had, based on my wheelbarrow, it just had a little more of a hump to get over. But it really doesn't matter whether you, that's second option, it really doesn't matter what side it's gonna be relative to the height of your car, your wheelbarrow. That being said, this is a small SUV where the trunk is flat. If you have a car, you know, where you have a trunk that's more deeper down, don't put your soil in your trunk. So put a clean tarp or something on the inside of your car. I know, I, I get it. You don't want to dirty your car with all these bags of soil. So put something down, put a tarp, put a blanket, put something, but you're going to use the same principle. You're going to slide it out. But when you have to go down into your trunk and then lift it back out, that's really hard on your back. So if you have a car, put it in the back seat and the back seat will slide right out as well. You might just have to jiggle a little bit on getting your wheelbarrow where you can place the wheelbarrow, but, um, and get the door open. You can move the front seat up as far as you can. And then, um, that gives you a little bit more room 
to get yourself in there to slide the bag out. But why lift things if you don't have to lift it? Slide it. So then here's our wheelbarrow, right? We've got the soil. Now let's pretend that the wheelbarrow was a little heavier. I actually, to pick it up, I've done two different types of squats there. I've done both a bit of a split squat. It's whatever's comfortable versus, um, so here we go. I'm just starting, I'm lifting it up and I just laid it down one foot in front of the other, or you could bend and squat as a, a regular squat. So both of them are ways, but I'm keeping that load similar to walkers. If you've ever seen people walking with their walker and their walkers are way far out in front of them, you wanna keep that load close. So I'm walking close to the wheelbarrow. So you wanna make that load, my leverage points are close to my body. Moving on. So then here is more about getting down. I'm a big fan of some type of kneeler. I'm a big fan of comfort. Um, so that is like a neoprene, uh, squishy kneeler. And I'm now close to, you can see that those 90 degree angles again, and I'm close to whatever I want. My one arm is directly straight down vertical. So my leg, my thigh bone is vertical and my arm bone is vertical. So I'm using, or I'm positioned myself right where I want to work. And then to get out of that position, we'll do it again. To get out of the position, I'm leveraging myself on both my little weed bucket and using my hand on my one leg. So that's as stable as it gets. And again, you're using your own leg muscles. You can see through all of this, we need to have strong legs. We've got to get, I'm just doing some weeding there, but we've got to... Uh, be really focused on posture body mechanics and leg strength. So here we go, putting one foot up, leveraging myself on both sides to stand up. Now, you can also leverage yourself. I'm using the shovel to help me get down. Same thing. I'm doing nothing different. I'm just holding something else. I'm in there doing my thing. Now I'm going to stand up using my hand on my knee and the shovel and pushing myself up. The same principles apply. It's just how do we maintain good body mechanics while we're doing this? Yeah, you just carry your shovel around with you and you're set. <laughs> yeah. And Absolutely. depending on the season, it might be a, you know, one of those bigger rakes, not a fan rake, but one of those other rakes where you're really digging in there um, yeah. or that is you know, using my shovel because I think I was replanting something. So flip on, oh, so here I found a dandelion. So again, I'm using my shovel to leverage myself. I'm down on one knee, I'm close to the load and I'm using that shovel just to help myself up. I'm showing you three, two or three different ways of, I can't remember here how many times I did this. Oh yeah, three different ways of um, getting to that weed. All of them had good body mechanics. There we go, there's my dandelion. Um, yeah, so I think that, um, I think when you have options right? Not everybody can be in a crouch like that on their knees. And that's fine. You do it a different way, right? You can either go on your hands and knees, or you do it in the first position. And quite frankly, if you're spending this weekend gardening, you might want to, you may, if, if your knees are fine, and you have no issues, you might want to play with all, all three of those mechanics, just to keep changing it, right? Instead of doing and, the same yeah, thing. Yeah, changing up your options. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one, oh, here. Now this is if someone has had a knee replacement. So um, we're saying it's a right knee replacement. So once you've had, I think in my career, I know three or four people who have been able to load that knee replacement and go down on the ground like this. You know, it's less than five, but there are some people who have been able to do that. 
it's not the norm though. So what we wanted to show was how to get down on the ground if you do have a knee replacement. So go to the right one, Miriam, because okay. we're saying that my knee replacement is on the right. So we're saying the right one is the knee replacement, just so you can see what I do. So I'm using the box, again, flip over my um, blue bin, and I haven't put any weight on that right leg. The right, the weight is actually on my left knee. And so then you have to use your rehabbed knee, your good knee, which is your replaced knee, to stand up with. We can do that again. They're the same. We're just showing you um, two different angles. But the one here on the right shows you the, uh, the right one is the rehab one. So I go down on the left, and then I don't have any weight um, on that right knee. It's not on the ground at all. And then I get back on the box here to help leverage myself. You have to come through with the replaced leg. We can show the left one here now, Miriam. Yeah, because the left one shows, you know, if you don't really want to stay on your knees, you're going right on to. I go knees. right on my side. And it's funny, um, just yesterday, I was having a discussion with somebody about um, who has osteoporosis and has some fractures. And she was saying, well, I was on the ground gardening. And I said, okay, no problem. And she, you know, I got on the ground and, and she was doing it just like basically the one here on the left, right? So she was weeding beside her. She wasn't leaning forward. She was leaning or she was weeding, you know, to either right or left of her. She was sitting on her bottom and, um, she was doing it fine with the best body mechanics that you can have, right? It's not always going to be perfect. We just have to do it as, you know, the best we can. Um, so here was um, digging. I'm not sure. I think we have video of this. You'll have some videos, yeah. Yeah, but again, it comes down to squats, I'm going to sound like a broken record by the time this webinar is over. Um, squats, squats, squats. We have to work our quads. We've got to work our hamstrings. We've got to work our glutes. So these videos are of me um, digging a hole to plant something in it. I think I think that's what I was doing here. Um, it's a squat. Right. And I'm also leveraging once I get the soil in there, I'm leveraging it with my arm. So I'm not humped over and trying to dig up and lift up all of that soil with my back. Let's see from this angle. That's a squat. No way around it. You can't get away from the squat. And it's a very good squat. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs> right. So flip now, this was this past weekend. This one, I was digging up some allium from this garden to put in my garden. And so the soil was pretty tough. It was a little dry. So I could not, uh, instead of thinking, okay, I'm going to go in there full hog and just lift it all up. No, it took me a few pushes of my shovel before I got it out. And then again, I'm leveraging with my arm. Why not? Get where you can. And I'm still down. I've got my left knee, my left foot up. So I'm actually in a bit of a hybrid of two of those squats because I don't have my right leg fully. But there's my allium bulbs that I have dug up to relocate. Um, so that's all it is to it. There it is raking um you know raking the problem with this is just like vacuuming i gotta tell you you know there's a lot of commonalities we're taking a lot of body mechanics that are poor body mechanics and and putting them in gardening but we do a lot of these poor body mechanics in other aspects vacuuming is one of the ones that uh parallels with this because for some reason we've been taught over the generations to lurch forward and we're leaning forward. But if we just moved our feet, 
uh, and kept the vacuum. Like I know the vacuum's on wheels, but you know, we want to lunge forward and we reach out our arm so that we don't take a couple more steps. But here's the option. Move with your rake. Take a few more steps. Have I your was, step counter on. I you know? tell people to dance with their rake. <laughs> well, there's Stay a great close. one. Dance, <laughs> dance with the rake. Put a few tunes on. You know, that is so much better. Do that again. Yes. There's no lurching. Again, you're keeping the load close to you. That's exactly what we're supposed to be doing is keeping the load close. So when you're dancing, Miriam, I until you said that, now all I can think about is dancing with the rake because <laughs> uh, it really is, right? Um, that is what you need to do. I can tell you um, after you implore or employ these better body mechanics, you will be able to garden day after day after day. Uh, because there isn't strain. There's exercise here to your back. There is um, work that you're doing, but you're not, um, you're working with good body mechanics. And what harm is there in that? That's all positive, positive, positive. Go ahead. So I think if the first um, message isn't about um, that you've heard so far, if the first message isn't about we need to uh, exercise our legs and we have to have strong quads, hamstrings and glutes, hips um, for gardening, for healthy gardening, um, then I think if that's not the first message you've heard, I think the second message needs to be we need to be um, working with good body mechanics, good pos postures um, and be really mindful about okay how does my back look how does it how does it feel if you start feeling like oh i'm getting tired we'll get up and do something different or that's a great time to go get a drink of water right when we're out gardening we need to be um taking breaks so what you used to do in one day or all on the may 2 4 weekend in two days maybe it's going to take four days to get it done okay it's all going to get done so i do this often when i garden and i really believe that this um prevents i i believe this to my bones that no pun intended that <laughs> this exercise um allows me to garden day after day after day this is a stretch because despite all of the best we can do at some points we might get into a little bit too much or too long of a bent a forward bent back well let's try and neutralize that and and go in the opposite direction and this is something that for i'm going to say 85 percent of the population this is a good exercise to be doing there will be people that it isn't great for but they are more the exception um, to the rule. Have you ever been down in your garden or cleaning out the tub or doing something under the bed or cleaning out a closet, a cupboard, and then you stand up and you just want to go, oh yeah, that feels good. If you've done that, you need to listen to your body a little bit more and do it more often. So we certainly listen very quickly when something hurts and oh, oh I better avoid, avoid that. But when something feels good, if it just in your core, that feels good to do, why aren't we doing it more often? And when you're out gardening, if you could stand up and do this, uh, do we have a video of this, Miriam? You know what? I don't think it made it in. Well, the, next yeah, time. <laughs> but so it's doing some repeated you might do it five times and then get back to your five times then go for a walk get your water um assess the situation how many more plants you want to go buy and then come back and and dig a few more holes but doing this back exercise just bending yourself backwards um and not squeezing your bum not tense everywhere else just letting yourself in a relaxed um, position or a relaxed state, bend backwards. Um, that can be so, so helpful. 
in order to uh, create a longevity for gardening, uh, particular in a certain um, time frame. Yeah, I, I agree. I find a lot of people know that they instinctively kind of do some of this. They just don't do it enough. They don't think to kind of do mm-hmm. it repeatedly over and over again. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, it just needs to do it more for yeah. sure. All right, so because we keep talking about these squats, we do have a video of Miriam doing a squat. So I think there's volume to this, right? So I'll be quiet. Yep, so Miriam's going to instruct us through a squat. Hit it. It's a great exercise for anyone. I'm going to stand sideways so you can see what's happening with my spine, my hips, and my knees. When a lot of people squat, what I see happen anyways is that they try to keep their back nice and straight and tall and squat down. And if you look at what's happening here, my knees are shooting forward. Yes, my back is straight and tall, but I'm putting a lot of strain on my knees. And really, I haven't actually bent my hips very much. If I hinge my hips back and bend a little bit more at my hips, can you see how my knees then, then come back a little bit? So I'm not straining there as much. My back is still straight or in its neutral position, but I'm just sitting back where I'm getting into my hips a little bit more. And from this position, as I stand up, I'm going to be using my glutes and my hands during this war, which is what we want, the intention of the exercise. So we don't want to be going straight up and down like this. And you can see how my knees are going forward. That becomes really hard on the knees. We want to sit back as if we're sitting in a chair. And as we're sitting back, keeping our chest lifted as best we can and really hinging at our hips. If we find that we're tight through hamstrings, muscles at the back of the legs, or our hip flexors here at the front, we might find that it's hard to get that real hip hinge. And as we go down, that we start to kind of round our back. And when our back is really rounded, can you see what happens to my knees? They push forward which in this position, again, straining the knees, but now we're also straining our back because it's in a flexed position. So I want to tilt my pelvis back so that I've got this curve in my back and that hinge in the hips. If you find that it's really hard to achieve that form, that's when you want to talk to your physiotherapist to find out, well, what areas are a little too stiff or a little too tight that we need to move a little bit more so that you can achieve a really good squat. Nailed it. (laughs) So uh, that was a great demonstration of a squat. And I really liked uh, Miriam being able to see you do it from the side because then you could see, again, um, we apply these principles to not just an exercise, nothing's tunnel visioned, right? It's about um, using this in all facets of life. And when Miriam was turned to the side and you could see uh, if you've been involved, hopefully with any type of um, exercise, uh, training, physio, there has been a real focus on don't have your knees come in front of your toes, you know? Um, And I think Miriam demonstrated that really well Um, the bad body mechanics uh, purposely uh, to show how to correct and uh, and have a very effective good squat so that was great so we wanted to wrap it up on um, on that squat and also leave some time um, to answer any questions that you have because I know that Um, I think the benefit of this talk is that we wanted to provide a lot of pictures, right? A lot of examples of options for you um, when it comes to really getting up and down from the ground and then uh, being able to maneuver and do the the lugging and the, the, the lifting that is required in doing a lot of gardening and how we can manage all that and still stay safe. So hopefully we were able to provide some options in both the the photos and the videos. Um, If anyone has any questions, 
um, the, the floor is yours if you want to put in a question and hopefully we can we can get it answered. Yeah, and if you end up thinking of a question later, then you know feel free to email us, give us a call, and we can certainly answer your question directly. Or yeah. if you're finding that you know you've kind of discovered there's you know positions in gardening that you really have a hard time getting to a position that is easier on your back, then you want to work with um, with a physiotherapist to help you find those those positions of good body mechanics and what's limiting you from achieving that and we can sort of work with you to find those really good functional movement patterns so that you're not stressing and straining your back or your knees or shoulder neck whatever the case may be yeah and I would say that I mean often enough I have people come in and see me because they um, either mentally or physically have lost the ability and a bit of a fear of getting on the floor. Mm -hmm. And so you dive into what's the root of that? Well, the root of that is actually um, a that you've stopped doing it, right? Once you stop getting on the floor, uh, quite quickly, I find there is a fear factor about, oh my gosh, I don't think I can get to the floor. Because there's a fear of how am I getting up? And, and that's a, a legitimate fear. And um, you only need to have called the ambulance once um, to help you get off the floor when you now have a, a horrific fear of getting down on the floor. So I, I have worked with lots of people who um, come in and that's what we practice. What is the strategy to get down and get up? And how do I do that? How do I do it once safely? Um, and without hurting myself. So that is something that people ask often um, about how to how to do that. And whether that is for the purpose of gardening, or whether that's the purpose for staying safe in your home and living independently in your home and feeling comfortable about that. Um, it's a it's a huge issue um, that isn't just applied to gardening. Um, I will further that a little bit since I've got the floor and I love having a microphone um, is that one of the ways that we can um, look at, well, how is your muscle strength is I often give people um, you take your dining room chair um, and you do with, can you get out of that chair without using your hands, prop it up against the wall or turn it around. So the back of the chair is at the table as long as it doesn't ding up the table, I don't want to be responsible for that. Um, but can you get out of it? And so can you get out of that chair without using your hands? And I'm talking about don't put them on your legs. Don't put them on the arms. Don't have them on the table. Can you stand up without the help of your hands? And if you can do it easy, well, then great. You keep working on your legs. Okay. You keep doing what you're doing. If you can't, or if you find that challenging, and I'm not talking just doing it once, uh -huh. but can you repeat it? Can you do that five times in a row? Um, if you can't do that easily, then that's, you need to work on your leg strength. That's something that uh, you yourself can test yourself on and see where am I at? Because if you can't get out of that chair without the assistance of your hands, you're at an increased risk of falling. And so obviously we want to prevent that. And so getting on the ground gardening might not be where you're at. So we need to be at the end of the day, strengthening your legs so that you continue to do what you want to do. You can go out to restaurants and not be worried. How am I going to get out of the chair? Am I in a booth? Am I, you know, am I going to need help to get out? What if there aren't any arms on the chair? I want to go to the movie theater, whatever it may be. But it all comes down to how do I know if I have enough strength in my legs? I would absolutely um, look at, can you get out of a chair? And I wouldn't use a, a sofa or a big mushy uh, couch as the, as the place to test this, but a firm, hard chair. Typically, a dining room chair is a little bit higher than a kitchen chair. But you, if you sit at a kitchen chair and eat your dinner every day, use that, right? Because that's what you've got. You got to be able to get out of that safely. So I use that as a bit of a test 
And then I use that as a treatment um, to give to people um, as a beginner exercise. If they are struggling with that, that's what they're going to do. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, do it five times when you eat your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, earn it, earn that meal. Um, and hopefully that can be a little bit to uh, maintain or improve your leg strength. Yep. So if anybody, if you do need some help and assistance to help yourself up off the floor so that you can garden to do those kinds of activities, then then certainly give us a call and uh, we can set up whether it's a free 15 minute consultation to um, talk about how we can help or whether it's it's a full on assessment. Um, yeah. Certainly make sure you follow us on Instagram or Facebook. We are often posting some, um, you know, important tips and so on to keep fit for life. And um, and certainly find us, um, just find us on, on, on our website for our newsletter. Um, but give us a call if you need us. So if there's awesome. no further questions, we will say good night. There's still some sunshine out there to enjoy sitting in your garden <laughs> for the evening. And um, we'll hopefully see you again at another one of our webinars. Happy, Good healthy night, gardening. Everybody.